How do guys, it's Luke at Luke's APS and in this video I'm going to show you how to suck an egg. Maybe show you how to use spray cans, but sucking eggs. Right guys, so thousands of comments over the last few years how i'm having this issue with spray cans it's bobbling I've, i keep turning back to using a brush to prime because I, I don't trust cans anymore this video will cure that for you i've only done that once and the reason why i've never done it again is i, I, I seeked help um from people that i saw as professionals as that i worked with regular back when i was in the trades and they told me where i'd gone wrong and i've never done it wrong again um so this video is to teach you what I've learnt. Um, now this doesn't matter what spray can you're using, whether it be a high acrylic pigment one like the like these, or you know graffiti style cans, um, cellulose based tins, acetone based tins, cheap, expect don't matter. Same principle. They all work. You just need to learn how to spray the can properly and a few steps to help you get a proper finish. So this video is going to take you through the basics. I know I've touched on using spray cans prop, you know, properly before, but this video is just aimed directly at that. Um, so hopefully this answers the questions to all you people that keep asking. And you know, if you are an experienced person, you never had a fault with a can, maybe watch it and see if you're doing exactly the same or if I'm doing something a little bit different. But I've sprayed in most conditions in the UK anyway, so from minus, I think about minus three, minus, I've sprayed out in, <laughs> in a gale before, that were, that were horrendous, um, but I've done that, uh, and I've even sprayed on a really hot day in England, which were about 27 to 30, um, it dried very quickly, but you can do it, uh, there's just a few steps to follow to do it, that's all, alright guys, so get the camera down, let's do this introduction to cans, and yeah, see you in the end. Right, so first off, a bowl of hot water from the tap. Not boiling water, hot water. Put your tins in, leave them a good five minutes. Take them out, you can dry them off if you want, but I don't mind throwing water all over my room. Uh, but make sure you give these a very good shake, okay? Especially this white undercoat can that I've got here, this cheap one. This has been in my shed possibly two or three years. Uh, I completely, I went in the shed the other day, cleared it out, and I got this one. So I thought, perfect can to show that it's been sat for ages. It's it's old and knackered. Um, there's not much paint left in it, so I'm getting a proper good shake-up. So I'll show you that it still works on cans that have probably even been frozen inside at one point. Um, it's just a matter about warming them up and giving them a shake, turn them upside down, shake the living hell out of them. It is boring, but it's essential. Once you've shook them though, I put them back in. Not as long though, just probably another minute or so while I'm getting my models prepped and everything else. So while ever you're not using the can, just pop it in some water uh, and keep that warm. Now give them just a, another little shake before getting them ready for spraying. Now, one thing to always do is test the tin, okay? So after you've shook it, test the tin on some cardboard. Now, what we're going to check here is distances, because all cans are, are different. Uh, these are the models we're going to be spraying. These are from uh, uh, Northumbrian Tin Soldier Company that I purchased a while back uh, that I'm going to paint for myself. But test the distance. Um, that was about, I'd say about four to six inches away. And as you can see, it's a nice close covering. If you spray further away, it's gonna be dusty. So what you wanna do is keep it up to six inch away with this can and short, sharp bursts left and right. Starting at one side, as you can see, short, sharp bursts. No, keep your finger on that nozzle. Because if you do, you might chuck too much paint on. Now there's loads of areas that have missed, uh, especially underneath the model. Um, and just bits where there's slight overhangs on the models. Don't worry about that, just let it dry first. So have these been sat a good few minutes? And then spray from underneath and get them bits that have missed. Um, same principle, sharp, sharp bursts from quite a close distance. Um, so you can back off a little bit, but not too much because you don't want to get a dusty finish. Um, and that way you get a really good covering over your models. 
Now to show this in practice about the distances of the can, the, all cans say 25 to 30 centimetres away. It's bad practice because some cans just are dry before they hit the models at that. Now that's what, three inch away, four inch away, and that's a perfect coverage. Six inch away with this tin, maybe seven, because my stretch would be in a base player is quite bigger than most. That's not too bad. Um, but you wouldn't want to do that as a covering spray. That's sort of a spray for zenithal highlighting uh, or just highlighting like terrain and things. As you can see, it's, it's it's not powdery, it's not coming off, and it's not raised like a sandy texture. But if you were doing that on a model, you'd waste so much paint and get so much overspray. And the overspray is bad when you're spraying in a box because that overspray can also rest on the models, which is not what you want. Now, I'll show you... 25 to 30 centimeters away with the spray can which is what they advise on most spray cans it looks like a concrete finish um, it's like sandy comes off it's dusty it's not what you want at all so don't follow that instruction test it and see what that can needs to be sprayed at now I'm going to zenith highlight with this white tin because it's really warm it's very old it's, it's pretty knackered to be fair test it up close it works perfectly, at a slight distance it starts to cloud up a bit, so I'm going in between, okay, so I'm, I'm going to be spraying it around 7 inch, 8 inch away. Short sharp bursts exactly the same as before, left and right, don't hold your finger on that nozzle and just spray it from above to get that zenithal highlight. And what I'll do is once I've just finished doing this, I'll show you up close so you can see how well and how well that's covered, even with an old shitty can. Um, it's just about getting them short sharp bursts that's the most important thing if you're not going to warm the can up at least give it a good shake and at least do controlled sprays left and right now it does look a bit speckly on a couple of them that's not a texture that's just how the paint is settled um, so if, if, you, if you're worried that it's speckled or gone a bit dusty just rub your finger across it if you can feel it then you might have to rub it off so guys it's not the cans it's how they're being used. Warming them up, even on a warm day, still warm the can up, okay? Because in that warm water, it's going to get warmer than the, the room temperature. That's what you want, okay? It makes, the, makes everything mix better. It makes the paint flow nicer. It makes the accelerant work better. It just does everything to this can better, okay? Now, when you're spraying, say this finger's the row of models, you're doing a short burst from the first model to your last model so say front of my finger to the uh, knuckle and it's just pss, 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 and that's all you're doing you're not going pss, pss. don't do that because when you do that there's a chance you can spray too much in one small small area there's more chance of the nozzle going pss, and spitting paint everywhere which is not what you want you're just trying to get a, a perfect even coat and the way to do that is sharp sharp burst left and right if you were doing like a big pizza terrain, you'd do the same thing, but you'd spray just in a straight line and you try and cover a section in one pass or two passes back and forwards in short sharp passes. And that gives you a nice even coat. But do let the coats dry before you try and get the bits that you've missed. I know it's very simple and very easy just to go, well, I can get that this time. And the amount of times that I've seen people do it, I mean, I've, I've done it myself sometimes and then ended up putting a bit too much paint on the model in the area that I've just sprayed. It happens all the time. Now, when the paint's dry and if you spray underneath and you get paint on where you've uh, got it originally, it doesn't matter because the paint sort of... You know thins out so when you get another tiny bit on you you're not going to notice all right so just build it up like that if you follow these steps you will not have a problem but always i've used army painter spray cans for a long time now um as you know they endorse me and i sell their products uh, i've also used paint factory tins i've used cheap pound shop cans i can get a good finish with any can i use all right now, the one thing I will say is when you're using Army Painter or any can at all, even though you've used it, this is the grey primer, the uniform grey, all right? I've had probably about four cans of this since I've started. 
not every can is identical so say you're comfortable at three inch or six inch away with that can the next can you can get might be slightly different the hole in the nozzle the nozzles could have changed the company where who make them for army paint and might have changed the nozzle entirely you're never going to know this so don't just assume that that can's going to work uh, the same as the last one always test it to see how it flows and what you want in is quite a nice tight um profile like spray spray pattern on the cab bit of cab on a bit of paper first and just make sure that it covers well no runs no nothing and then just repeat that spray on your models and it'll be fine okay you can do this tipping it upside down spraying paint off your nozzle if you wish but all i do is i just give give it a wipe with my finger and i've never had to do the upside down spraying and wasting accelerant so thanks for watching guys thanks for tuning in i know it's a bit of a video that might some people might find a bit patronizing but it, it, i had to ask to get perfect results and i'm just passing on the information that i've been told okay so if you've liked this video you know pop a comment pop a like um if you've got anything to add if you think there's something that i'm missing with my spraying please let me know i'll have a go um but because i've had no failures i've had no flaws spraying this way um i, I just think everybody should spray well not exactly like me but if you adopt some of these uh, tips i'm sure you shouldn't have any errors and all these people struggling with spray canning you shouldn't have a problem again. It should build your confidence right up so you just start turning to them rather than getting your brush out and taking ages for priming. All right, guys. So thanks for watching. If you're wanting to buy any of the Army Painter product range, do check the links below and you can see my full Scenics range. You can see the Army Painter range um, and just, yeah, glues, all sorts. So, yeah. Thanks a lot, guys. See you again for the next video on Thursday where I will be announcing the winner of the Base Ready range. See you in a bit.